Hello and welcome back to the Kraken Fan YouTube channel. We're solving today's daily lead code problem, 1405 Longest Happy String. A string S is called happy if it satisfies the following conditions. S only contains the letters A, B, C. S does not contain any A, 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 so three A's in a row, B, 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 three B's in a row, or three C's in a row as a substring. It's going to contain at most A occurrences of the letter A. It's also going to contain at most B occurrences of the letter B, and at most C occurrences of the letter C. Given three integers a, b, c, return the longest possible happy string. If there are multiple possible happy strings, you can return any of them. If there's no such string, then return the empty string. Okay, so let's look at an example, and we're actually just going to solve this problem <clears throat> in the code editor because it's one of those where it's actually easier to just walk through it, um, the logic. But the general intuition here is that Obviously, we want to place um, our characters such that we avoid having um, three of the same character in a row. And you'll notice that here um, we have seven uh, C's and one B. So since we can't have three C's in a row, we can put two C's, then a B or an A, or and then two more C's, and then either whatever character we didn't use, and then two more C's. And we actually wouldn't use one um, C because we can't have three in a row. So we actually just want to use the biggest character um, that exists. And we always want to try to place as many as we can because we don't want to get into a case where we've used up the other characters and the only one is like whatever the largest one is because then we can only put a maximum of two in a row. Um, so we want to basically put as many of, a, of the largest character count as we can, two in a row, and then split it up with another character then do two in a row again, and basically try to do that to maximize uh, the length of the string. So all we need to do is just keep track of you know, the characters we have available to us, and also the amount of characters in a row for each character. So the amount of C's in a row and amount of B's in a row. And if it's two, then we have to place a different character uh, that's not equal to the one that we're currently placing. Otherwise, we can just place another character. So let's see what this would look like because it's actually much easier in the code um, and kind of walking through an example is just too confusing. So we need to keep track of how many of each character we've placed because remember we cannot place three C's in a row, we cannot place three B's in a row, we cannot place three A's in a row. So let's define some variables. Current A, current B, uh, current C is gonna equal to zero. And what these are gonna track are basically the amount of A, B, and C in a row that we currently have. <clears throat> And we'll update these as we go along. And we also need um, basically the total amount of characters we have. So total chars is going to equal to A plus B plus C. And now we also need a result to basically store uh, our result because we need to return a string. So we need some sort of string builder. So now what we want to do is we want to place as many characters as we can in a greedy manner. It's actually not guaranteed that we'll be able to place all of them obviously but we want to place as many as we can and that will give us the like uh, optimal answer because we're looking for basically like a greedy solution so the best that we can do so we're going to say for i in range of total characters what we're going to do is we're going to say okay let's see if we can place an a and what are the conditions such that we want to place an A. So we always want to be placing the largest character. So let's check that actually A is the largest character, right? So we're going to say if A is actually greater um, than B, so if we have more A's than B, and we have more A's than C, greater than or equal to C, uh, and we need to check that we don't have two A's in a row. So if cur A oops, uh, does not equal to 2, so if this is true, or we have some other conditions, or um, if the current A is actually greater than zero, but the other two characters have done two in a row, so, or uh, A is greater than zero, uh, sorry, or A is greater, ugh, or A is greater than zero, and current B equals to two, or current um, C equals to two. So basically, if we can only place an A. So this is the condition that needs to be met for us to place an A. Basically, it needs to be the largest character, and we can't have had two characters in a row. Or if it's not the largest character, then the other two previous ones um, need to be equal to two, and we actually need to have A's available to us. So those are the two cases where we want to place an A. 
and we actually can just copy this logic for the other cases when we just need to change the variables around. So if A is the maximum, then we want to um, add it, right? So basically, if it's if it's a maximum and its streak is less than two, or if a streak of B and C is already two, then A uh, by definition has to be the next character. So we're gonna say result uh, result dot append A, and now we've used an A, so let's decrement the A count, and now the streak of the A's is gonna increase by one. And obviously the other ones will now get set to zero. So current B equals zero and current C equals zero because we've now placed an A. So that means that the streak for the B's and the C's obviously gets reset because there's now an A splitting them up. So their streak will go down to zero. Okay, so now all we have to do is do the other two cases, which is for the B. And it's basically gonna follow the exact same logic, except we just flip the variables around. So we're gonna say if B is actually um, greater than or equal to A, and let's see, B is now greater than or equal to C, and the current B streak does not equal to two, or, and then we can copy the same logic here, B is greater than zero, and, uh, let's see, and the current streak for C equals two, or the current streak for A equals two, uh, then we wanna place this character here. So hopefully I didn't mess up my parentheses, we'll figure it out later. Okay, so again, we just have the same logic, so instead of the A's, it's gonna be, we're gonna append the B, now we decrement the B count, and then we're gonna say the current B, its streak is gonna increase by one, the A streak, is going to get reset, the C streak is going to get reset, and there you go. Now the last case we have to handle, of course, is the C one, and again we can just copy the code, we just have to change the variables around. So if the C count is greater than or equal to A, and the C count is greater than or equal to B, and the current C streak does not equal to, or again, that C is greater than zero, um, and the current streak for A equals two, or the current streak for B equals two, then we place the C. Okay, so there we go. We just need to repeat what we did for the other steps, result.append C. Um, we also have C minus equals one. We're gonna increment the current streak of the C's by one, and then the streak of the A equals zero, and the streak of the B equals zero. And we're gonna do this basically as many times as we can. Um, for all of the basically, basically the characters. So we could be able to place all of them, we could not. We're basically going to place as many as we possibly can and whatever is left in our result is what we need to actually return. So because result is actually a, let's see if I check my indentation here, it should be here. Um, because it's actually a list of strings, we just need to join it together and return that. So we're gonna do um, this dot join and we're gonna return the result. So let's just run this. I oh, okay cool. I didn't mess up my parentheses. Nice, uh, cool. Accepted. And um, yeah. So time and space complexity. Obviously, all we're gonna do here is just go through the string. In the worst case, we have to go through the entire uh, of a, b, and c. So the time complexity is gonna be big O of a um, plus b plus c. We're obviously a, B, and C are the counts uh, given to us here. So that is the time complexity. For the space complexity, it's technically big O of one because we need the results to actually return it. Um, otherwise, you know, you, ha you have to return a string and there's no way to do it because you have to copy the strings in Python. Uh, they're not mutable. So big O of one, if not counting a result, uh, I guess like string builder, uh, string builder, uh, otherwise, technically, it's big O of n because we do have this result, but you need it for the answer. So that's why it's it's either one. Uh, you can just tell the interviewer that if you're ever even going to get this question in an interview. Anyway, so that's how you solve this problem. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Another interesting question for the daily. Uh, luckily, not too hard. Just really annoying with all this if statements. This is horrible code. Um, would not want to see this in anyone's um, PRs at work. But anyway, uh, that's enough blabbing. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and comment. If you did, subscribe to the channel for more videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye.